Welcome to The Baking Journalist. Today's bread, rosemary. Today's topic, the power of the press. Let's do it. Welcome back for another episode of The Baking Journalist. I'm Tony Ganser, your baking journalist. Uh, today's bread, rosemary, it's uh, not too bad. It's also a simple bread, a little more complicated than salted French, but still pretty easy and a good bread for an appetizer bread or just a munch on. So before we talk about journalism and begin talking about the power of the press, let's take a look at the ingredients we're gonna need. Today we're gonna need one tablespoon of sugar, one cup warm water, one package of dry yeast, these quarter ounce packets, one tablespoon of olive oil, or just eyeball it, one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of butter, softened butter, two tablespoons of rosemary, three cups of flour, and again, optional, an egg, but we're gonna use that again. In talking about the power of the press, I'm talking about something very specific that what gives the press power or the perception of power? You know, there are these sayings, the pen is mightier than the sword, but it's not just journalists themselves which have any sort of power. It's actually the people, the audience, the citizenry, they're the ones that have the real power. The journalists are just giving information. And yes, you can shape political stories, you can shape news stories by how you tell it and uh, the details you give, but really the, the only people who can actually do something about corruption or some grievous crime are people and the institutions that people create. But let's dig in here and get our bread started. So if you're really curious about my thoughts on power in the press, I actually wrote an essay comparing Machiavelli's thoughts on power to what we're seeing in this war on media. And I kind of use that tongue in cheek in announcing this series that as the war on media heats up, maybe we should do something productive like bake some bread. This is about power. Typically when people attack the press, it's because they feel threatened. And Machiavelli, his writings were all about uh, gaining power and maintaining power. People in power, politicians, dictators, autocrats, they see the press as something they can't control and something that can quickly turn the people against them. Again, the power rests in the people. If there's popular uh, outcry, against a leader, there's not much he or she can do about it. In the short term, sure, oppression, but in the long term, the people went out. And as I said in the Salted French episode, journalists are really just agents of the people, servants of the people. We can analyze news, we record history, and uh, you know, shed light on things that need light shed upon them. We've got some bubbles in here, that yeast feeding off this sugar. Okay, we've got our two cups of flour in there. We've got one cup waiting, and we're just gonna mix this around again. You really want that softened butter to be 
plenty mixed in here. And again, we're working towards a workable dough. We're gonna have to knead, again, for about 10 minutes uh, once we have that. You've got this soup of stuff here. So, you, you know, Machiavelli has this reputation of, well, his, work, his name is really synonymous for being devious. A lot of historians have said he had a bad rap, that he was really just a political scientist looking into power and how power was utilized. But his observations are really about human nature. And to a degree, that's what journalism is about in its many forms, human nature. It's about how people are using money or misusing money, how people are using power, misusing power, uh, how people are treating each other well or, or poorly. It's, it's all about the human condition and that's what journalism is. Sure, events happen, but people make the events happen. People are influenced by whatever is going on. So Machiavelli, he keeps coming back to, especially in The Prince, uh, one of his most famous works about the importance of the people. He talks about fortresses at one point, that the best fortress you can have is not to be hated by the people. <laughs> and that's pretty direct, right? By labeling journalists either as having their own agenda or uh, you know, misreporting for whatever reason, then that discredits the press it breaks the covenant, which is supposed to exist, that journalists are just uh, servants of the people and society. And once that happens, then an autocrat or a uh, ruthless political leader can pretty much do whatever they want because they're controlling the message, they're controlling um, perception, We've already put in our three cups of flour. I'm gonna add in more, because this is still pretty sticky dough. We're almost there. I'm not gonna add in too much. Like I said last time, this is, it's not a science. You really have to look at your dough, kind of get a feel for how it's working or not working. And we have to admit, yeah, there are some journalists that are just not doing the right things, um, working for themselves, especially young journalists. I, I notice some of them want to be the next Woodward and Bernstein and break news. And that's fine. It's good to be ambitious, but the greater craft of journalism and the duty to society is not always about breaking news. Sometimes the most important news is just going to the city council meeting every week or you know, keeping an eye on budgets or just going into neighborhoods and talking to people and seeing what, what life is like right now. What are the struggles? What services aren't being provided or what things do they need? You may not win awards for that, but a lot of times those stories are some of the most important that need to be told. So when you've got a lot of journalists who are working for themselves or the glory or perceived glory, then the system kind of breaks down. So sometimes attacks on the press will paint journalists like that, that these are just selfish people with their laptops and fancy hats and bread. And that's not always accurate, but it's, it's about perception. It's about trying to manipulate the people in one way or the other. So this is still pretty soft, but we're going to let it rise here for a little bit. So just like last time, uh, take another bowl. This one, uh, again, I've prepared this time with olive oil, not just vegetable oil or, or nonstick spray. We are just going to leave the dough in here, let the yeast do their jobs, and we'll be back when they're done. So now we punch it down and we'll shape our loaves, and then we have to let it rise a bit more.
loaves have risen a fair bit here. Uh, because we didn't use as much yeast, there's not as much flour. They didn't rise as much as our salted French loaves, but um, these look just fine. So after sprinkling the uh, rosemary on and sea salt, again, I have just an egg wash, just egg and water. This is gonna harden up our crust. So these are going to go in to the oven at 375 for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven and how they look. You wait until they're nice and brown and have a hollow sound and they will be delicious, I'm sure. You know, another quote from Machiavelli that uh, comes to mind. He said, proceed in a temperate manner with prudence and humanity. He also said, too much distrust renders someone intolerable. That's also the case with journalists, I think. I hope you enjoy this rosemary bread. It smells delicious. Hopefully yours does too. And until next time, I'm Tony Ganser, your baking journalist. Enjoy.